think about it. Do you not think Emma Chamberlain has ADHD and like doesn't know it? I have a lot to say, but before we get into it, a disclaimer, okay? I'm not Emma's doctor. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> like, these are my personal suspicions, just things that I've noticed as someone who spends a lot of time researching ADHD for my own peace of mind. I adore Emma and nothing I'm gonna say today is about like on her in any way, but I do feel compelled to talk about it because as we're learning, like not enough women know they have ADHD. If I can get just like one young woman to click on this video and be like, wait a minute. And then she ends up getting like a diagnosis that changes her life for the better then like my work here is done. You know what I mean? So with all that out of the way, let's get into it. Now, first of all, I would like to point out, I think Emma makes an incredible case study for this because she's been documenting her life online since she was like, what, si like 16, maybe even 15. So we can see from a very young age that she was always, say it with me, hyper as fuck. I actually do think she's like mellowed out a little bit, but at the time she was like talking super fast, impulsively saying like whatever was on her mind. And we loved her for that, more on that later. But right, she was like bouncing off the wall. She was moving from thing to thing to thing to thing. And I'm low key shocked that she did not get diagnosed as a child with that level of like hyperactivity that she had. I think that's just a testament to how overlooked young women are with regards to ADHD, right? Like even if they are exhibiting some of the most basic, obvious symptoms, they're still not gonna be recognized. You know what I mean? She actually made a video back then explaining like why she stopped going to school. I thought about just inserting the clip here, but to be honest, I don't know how copyright works on YouTube yet, so I'm not gonna risk it. So I'm just gonna pretend to be her for a quick second. I maybe showed up to school maybe three times a week. Like I couldn't fucking do it. I'd sit in class and I'd just cry. I don't even know why. It wasn't my school's fault. It wasn't anyone's fault. I just didn't like the environment. Towards the end of the year, I became severely depressed. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't hang with my friends. I didn't do anything and it sucked. That really resonated with me because I happened to be going through the exact same thing at the exact same time just in college, right? Which honestly was pretty confusing because I'd always been like a very good student. But when you have ADHD and something bores you to the point of literal tears, you do feel stupid because your brain won't even, it's like your brain won't even turn on and process the information that is like just being thrown at you. And it doesn't matter that there's a part of you that's like, please pay attention, please pay attention, please try and grasp this. Like your brain is just like, no. <laughs> It was very painful and depressing and it affected other areas of my life. Something that's interesting to me is that she goes on to explain in this video that once school was out for the summer and then she happened to find YouTube, right? A creative outlet that she immediately becomes intensely passionate about and she has all the time in the world to do that instead of going to school. Depression lifts. Right? Like, I don't think that's a coincidence. And then boom, as soon as she's forced to go back into this environment that does not work for her presumably ADHD brain, like boom, she's anxious and depressed all over again. This brings me to a bit of a sidebar, but I think it's really important that we talk about it. I'm not saying the depression isn't real, but it is my personal unprofessional belief that they're not innate, but rather the side effects of unmanaged ADHD, right? I end up getting formally diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and PTSD. Now the anxiety, yes. Do I have PTSD? I do. But the depression, I was like, mm, sir, I don't think so. And what I've come to realize over time is that I was exhibiting symptoms like that of depression based on being overwhelmed and therefore like shutting down. Like if I don't have enough dopamine in my brain to make me do the things that I want to do, you know, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to do them. So then they pile up and because I lack like the internal processing and prioritization skills, everything feels, you know, equally important all at once. So then you're just overwhelmed to the point that you just never stop spinning your wheels and then you exhaust yourself. And then you try to drown out the wheel spinning with like mindless entertainment. And for me personally, like eating my feelings, right? Okay. 
you just don't have any energy to do this stuff and the cycle continues, right? So back to Emma, sorry, tangent about myself, but I'm not minimizing her struggles at all. I know they are very real, but what I believe she was going through based on the fact that her depression was situational rather than just all the time is yeah, exactly like what I explained, like people with ADHD need things to be fresh. And I also think that people with ADHD are super smart, right? A lot of people with ADHD are super smart. So we tend to learn things very quickly, master them very quickly, and then get bored very quickly and want to move on. And when your life circumstances prevent you from being able to move on in search of like fresh new dopamine or whatever, like of course you're gonna get depressed. I can remember certain phases of Emma. There was the vlogs that just had like the really insane edits. And then there reached a point where like, there just wasn't as much energy. And around that time, she made a video about like, why I don't upload very much. And I remember her vividly doing this like dramatic reenactment of like how she feels. And she's like writhing around on her bed, like crying and screaming. And it's interesting because this is such a stark contrast to how she genuinely felt at the start of her YouTube career. And at some point she mastered it. It stopped being new and exciting. From my perspective, it looked like, again, she just felt trapped. I do think she tried everything in her power to kind of like reinvigorate herself and like reignite that spark that she had for the platform again. But this kind of leads me to my next piece of evidence that she has ADHD. I really want to zero in on what I'm going to call like art house Emma. You remember those vlogs? It's like her personality was still in them, but there was a lot of silence, a lot of like, you know, very like haunting music. The visuals were giving like last girl living in post-apocalyptic LA. You know what I mean? But even that era was so short lived because what we got like 12 videos in that style and then she got bored and she moved on. And I think that at the end of the day, that is why she's choosing to focus on her podcast, a podcast called Anything Goes actually floored at what a finesse this was. Can you imagine a better scenario for someone with ADHD? First of all, she doesn't do video. So if she's having like a struggle morning, like she does not need to put on makeup. She doesn't need to shower. She can just roll up in that bitch and record. And then second of all, it's called anything goes. So she can literally go about living her life and then talk about whatever is interesting to her that week. Tell me that's not the ADHD dream. <laughs> anyway, speaking of interesting, I actually wrote in the script, I'm getting a little bored of this script. So it's time for some rapid fire evidence. <laughs> Self-medicating with coffee. I fucking get it. Hyper fixating on something. And then once you're over it, you never want to see or have anything to do with that subject ever again. The impulse of shopping, yup being very easily stimulated and yet somehow getting bored super easily, uh-huh. Random impulses to pursue like a sudden dash of dopamine. No! Crying about seemingly nothing until you are crying about everything. Difficulty following instructions so you don't even read them, but then you get confused with what you're doing so then you give up midway through. Yeah, been there. Needing to say something and being so afraid you're gonna forget it that you blurt it out. And then people who don't know and understand you think you're a little bit rude and self-important. Yes, okay. Being so overwhelmed with why you can't seem to do things that it feels like even texting your friends back is overwhelming. So you disappear, but your neurotypical friends don't fucking get it and they're hurt. And you don't know how to explain that it's not that you don't love them. It's just the way your brain works but again they don't get it so you lose all your friends relatable <laughs> honestly i could keep going with these actually but i think i've made my point <laughs> number one again this is not to take away anything from her personally her work ethic none of that her iconic editing style i think that this stems from two adhd tendencies number one the obvious tendency to get bored very, very fast. I think she just instinctually started making the only type of videos that she could even stand to watch. You know what I mean? Fast paced, quick cut, tons of zoom, sound effect, pop up, story time, like, you know what I mean? And then number two, like clearly Emma had a natural knack, natural knack, 
natural knack for editing. But that initial like feel of her early videos, I think was so raw. Like I think she had just enough patience to learn the basics of like Final Cut Pro. You know what I mean? And I think that was part of the appeal. She is just such a lively and engaging person, okay? And when I sit back and think about it, I actually feel that way about pretty much everyone I know that has ADHD. I do, because there is like an excitability there rather than a jadedness, you know what I mean? Obviously like the trademark ADHD excitability can be a little much for people. And you know, some people don't love that and that's fair and that's fine. Um, which brings me to another point, okay? The bravery she showed in choosing to put her authentic ADHD-ness out there. Jokes about not showering, she wouldn't have the energy for makeup. I still can't do that. You know, she would just say whatever's on her mind, even if it's talking about like shit in her pants in public. But I do think that that's some ADHD shit, okay? And made her stand out amongst all the that girls before they were called that girls, you know? Another way I think she stood out that maybe, like maybe this is a stretch, but I think it's interesting. I think that her ADHD kind of translated into this really like funky and eclectic personal style. And that made her stand out amongst the beige bitches on Instagram, okay? And I say this as like a neutral basics bitch. You know this about me. Okay, maybe you do, I don't know. I think she follows her natural ADHD curiosity and we'll end up putting together like very unique silhouettes, stuff that you just wouldn't think works. And I think that that makes her a trendsetter rather than a trend follower, you know? And then because she gets bored so quickly, she like moves on to the next thing while the rest of us are like still playing catch up, you know? I think that has a huge hand in like what makes her you know? And by the way, this isn't just about her fashion. Like I said earlier, she does this with content. All right, so we just have one last part of the video and then we're gonna wrap this up, I promise. I just wanna take a quick second to talk about like what we as people with ADHD can learn from Emma's incredible success, okay? Number one, don't be afraid to show up in all of your ADHD like eccentric stuff, you know? I think a lot of us are exhausted from trying to mask all the time, but people appreciate authenticity. Lesson number two, don't niche down. I probably have four or five other channels on this platform that I no longer upload to because I created them thinking like, oh, I gotta do the, the niche thing. So then like whatever I was like into at the moment, but then I make like a few videos about it and be like, meh, enough of that. Seriously guys, if I ever talk about like trying to make a another channel, don't let me do it. And I think number three, if you just keep like walking your path and like following your curiosity, you never know like where that can lead you. Now I know I already said this, but I'm just gonna say it one more time. I don't know Emma and I'm not a doctor, so I don't know this for sure. It's just, it's just a thought that I have. But if you are anything like me and you found yourself watching her content back in the day, and like relating a little too much to like not wanting to get out of bed because you're overwhelmed and like not wanting to shower because I don't know, whatever. Then like maybe get yourself checked out or maybe you already know you have ADHD. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with this. Now I've got all kinds of like ADHD talk content planned for this channel, but if you have any requests, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much already. Bye.